These are the Dragons, five of Britain's most enterprising and wealthy business leaders. They're about to make or break the dreams of dozens of hopeful entrepreneurs. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe it. I'm here to look for serious investments. Of course. In business, I like to stack the cards in my favour. Shan, I'm a bit taken back. It sort of seems too good to be true. I think you've done amazingly well. I really do. I think we're all sitting here thinking, what do we ask? She's brilliant. The multi-millionaire investors have each built up their fortunes from scratch. Theo Pafitis specialises in transforming the fortunes of some of Britain's biggest high street chains. Glaswegian Duncan Bannatyne has a reported £320 million empire, including hotels and health clubs. Serial entrepreneur Deborah Meaden originally made her fortune in the West Country leisure industry. Having built up a global recruitment business, James Kahn now heads a private equity firm investing millions each year. Peter Jones has a business portfolio that ranges from telecoms and leisure to property and media. Inside the den, the dragons are ready to invest their own money, but only in the right business. Tonight, will any of these hopeful entrepreneurs walk away with the cash? Welcome to the Dragon's Den. Here, five multimillionaire investors have the money and power to change the lives of entrepreneurs who pitch their business ideas to them. The best entrepreneurs will give up equity in their company but will leave with a much needed cash injection. The rest will walk away with nothing. Nottingham duo Richard Enyan and Michael Davis think they have a totally new experience for the Dragons and they're first up. Hi, my name's Richard Enyan. My name's Michael Davis. I'm the musical director. Our company's called Bass Tone Slap. We create a positive, energetic sound. And we're here today offering you 10% equity for an investment of £50,000. The two main services we offer are corporate team building and drumming for entertainment and experiential marketing. I proudly give you Bass Tone Slap. Team with clients have included Citigroup, Unilever, and the Tower 42 management team. And last year, one of the world's top marketing agencies selected us to <coughs> record part of the soundtrack and appear in the latest Cadbury Whisper advert. Prices range between £1,000 and £3,700, with a profit margin <laughs> of between 40 and 60%. Before we open up the floor to your questions, I'd like to thank my band. Thank you, guys. If you would any of you guys like to have a go? Yeah. See you when I give it a go, won't we? Well, no more takers? We, we've, we've laid Deborah, on the... We've laid, come on, yes. We've laid on the bed one. together. Yes. <laughs> James, James, thank you. No, I'll pass on this, thank you. James, I know you've got a little wild side, come on. <laughs> Good man. Peer pressure. We need my sticks. Deborah, here you go. That's all right. Thank you. Pleasure. OK, so what I'd like to do, I'm going to count up to four and we're just going to start, OK? One, two, three, four.
Richard Enyon, Michael Davis and their drummers have delivered an energetic pitch for £50,000 to expand their team building business. But one dragon's looking skeptical. What experience have you got that gives you the ability to be a corporate team builder? Okay. Um... My experience is not in the corporate world, but my experience is in playing music. And you saw earlier how we got you guys to drum together. That's the essence of what we do. Well, you got those four guys to drum together. Yeah. Whether or not they thought that was good corporate team building or not is, is another thing. But what makes you feel that you can, you can build teams in the corporate world by getting people to play their drums? It's a good question. Well, yeah, I mean, tr tr drumming unites people. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe team building is about uniting people in their direction and by playing a piece of music together we're playing one thing we have one common focus so what happens at the corporate team building event the people arrive the people arrive um we walk in throw in a few icebreakers do a bit of body percussion get the rhythms moving what's the body percussion uh a little example <laughs> yeah. yes please okay, okay. are you gonna join in as well duncan no nope. okay it's fine guys madam uh just just go with me richard just just so that you know okay yeah I'm here to look for serious investments. Of course. I'm not here to have fun and play the drums. Okay. okay. Carry on with your that, that doesn't play demonstration. Okay. So, the, the complete icebreaker. Ready? Just go with it. <laughs> Guys, I'm counting on you to hold that. <laughs> okay, pretty basic. A little bit of clapping, a little bit of stamping. That goes straight onto the drums. Was Might that be... it? Imagine with a group of 100 people doing that, splitting the groups up. That was corporate team building. That was Do you feel as if you've been corporately team mm. built? Duncan Bannatyne's cynicism seems to be infectious. Will James Kahn find the duo's financial situation more convincing? In the last 12 months, what have you guys generated as income? Turnover 10,000. Okay. In the next 12 months, what will the band generate? We anticipate turning over 120,000 with okay. a net profit of 20,000 pounds. Richard, do you want to be... I'm going to give you another chance okay. for that question, okay. because if you get that wrong, the chances are you won't get an investment. You're going to go from 10,000 to 120,000. How are you going to achieve that? Over that 12-month period we've just experienced, we've been building up our brand. We're at a stage now we've got strong testimonials from some of the world's biggest companies. As I said, we did the Cabris advert. We're predicting uh, 70 events for the first 12 months. That is almost on target for 120,000. OK. The projections seem ambitious, but not far-fetched. Deborah Meaden wants to find out about the competition. Who gets the business? Who actually goes out and generates the business? I would go out and get the clients, see them, and then talk about what they want from the session, uh, talk about fees, negotiate. Who else does this? I mean, there, there, are, there are other... Yeah. The biggest company's been running for 12 years and they've got franchises in, I think, 26 companies. And do you know the terms of that franchise? As in how much they... Their yeah, I do, I do, actually, yeah. The franchise is sold for 100,000. Mm. Eh? Hey? Yeah. We picked their brains at a trade fair a couple of years ago. Revelations about their competitors' success has whetted the dragon's appetite about the potential size of this market. But will it be enough to change the mind of an initially dismissive Duncan Bannatyne? When you came in and you played the drums, I mean, you described it, Richard, as um, energetic and positive. And I wrote down one word as to how I felt about it. The word I wrote down wasn't positive and it wasn't energetic. What do you think it was? Exciting. Has it a guess? I'm scared of guessing, to be honest. Go on, tell us, please. Horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you got these four up, and they played the drums. So I thought, well, I'd better write down just how this feels. What do you think I wrote down? It wasn't energetic, it wasn't positive. Different from horrendous. Even more horrendous is what I wrote down. I'm out. Well, let me tell you where I am, guys. This is nothing against you. I mean, I think this is a, 
a good idea, but I can't see any value being created from a business point of view other than having fun. So I'd like to declare myself out. Two dragons out, and the duo are starting to sound less confident. Now they have to face the scrutiny of Peter Jones. I think you are a breath of fresh air. Thanks. Thank you. I really, really, really do. I absolutely got it. I've been to three or four team building events. Um, I have not come across drums before, but I've come across the most ridiculous ideas that when you went with it, you thought, what on earth am I doing? This is a complete waste of time. Within 20 minutes, you're in, you're all mixing in together, you're talking to people that actually you don't, didn't really like before. And obviously, I own with Theo an events company. We're always looking for new things. So with that in mind, I am going to make you an offer. Half the money for 20%. But my offer is, is conditional upon hearing what Theo wants to do. OK, thanks. Thank you. To the astonishment of some of his rivals, Peter Jones wants to back the duo. But only a fellow dragon, Theo Pafitis, agrees to follow him. What's your background? I trained classically and then did the rock band thing and then found my way to Africa and got into the African thing. Um, but my background have, is... Have you ever had a job? Yeah, as a drummer. I've, I've made my living as a drummer for 12 years. You made a good living? No, I've, I've got by, and this is the point that I'm turning it into making a good living, because I've teamed up with Richard. Right. How about you, Richard? I uh, started playing kit when I was 12. I uh, went to university, studied business information systems, um, got into the events industry, started doing uh, game-based team-building events, and then met Mikey, uh, found out about the industry of corporate team-building through drumming, saw people were doing it, that the model actually worked, and we thought we'd give it a go. And that's where we are. OK. Um, I just get the feeling that this is predominantly going to end up being a lifestyle business. It's about people. It's about you too. So I need your commitment you're going to stick with the business till I get my money back. Both of you. You have my commitment. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Then I will match. Peter's offer, which is half the money uh, for 20%. The deal on the table is for four times the amount of equity the duo were initially offering. Is Deborah Meaden prepared to compete? If I had a structure that I could immediately put you into, I would be making you an offer. But I don't, so I'm afraid for that reason I won't be investing. But I've had a lot of fun. I'm out. Um, could we just have a little chat? Yeah, you minutes? go and have a chat. Drum, okay. drum away. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Forty percent of the company is a lot more than Richard and Michael originally wanted to give away. Will it be too much? <clears throat> OK, um, had a little think. And we like your offer, and we appreciate your offer. Um, how negotiable is the percentage? Not at all. It's a huge cut on quite a small business, so that is quite a scary prospect. What, what's a huge cut of nothing? Would, would we? I'm going to help you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're struggling with the it's answer. nothing. Would that tie us exclusively no. to your company? No. No, no, no. Certainly not. Absolutely not. Three seconds. Turn it back. <laughs> we will happily accept your offer. Well, hey. Thank you very much. Richard and Mark have done it. They walk away with the £50,000 they need and two well-placed dragon investors. Three, four.
the dragons get to see a wide range of ideas and inventions in the den, but know nothing about the entrepreneurs before they walk up those stairs. David Thomas from Gwyneth wanted £100,000 for his new space-saving ensuite facility, the Roto Suite. I came up with this idea of a revolving ensuite unit. This is our Roto Suite. It rotates 180 degrees. And then you have a toilet and basin on the other side. The multi-millionaire investors never really got to grips with the concept. If you can put that in a place, you need enough space behind yeah. this wall now. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's irrelevant. I don't know. Pointless, David. But it's you would really never, you would never get a shower pointless. and a toilet in, into this area. This is 1.2 diameter. But you need the space to start with. Fitz, get out a minute. The rivalry among the dragons is fierce. Get in there. You just get in. And Theo Pafitas did find one unexpected use for David's invention. And my next trick. <laughs> Abracadabra. Brilliant. Wow. Brilliant. Oh, I'm <laughs> James Kahn wanted to know more about the inventor's background. David, what's your day job? I don't know. A waste disposal company. What sort of turnover? Two and a half million. Can you, do you have a hundred grand you can invest in this business? Possibly, I could find it. You could find it, couldn't you? Yeah, possibly. But despite his business track record, the dragon soon pulled the plug on David's investment dreams. It has no reason to exist. I'm afraid it's not for me, I'm out. The fact that you've got such a great successful business is fantastic. And I wish you every, every luck in the world doing something else and hope to see you next time when you come on. But I'm not going to invest in this, so I'm out. Okay. Now, it's their own money at stake, so the dragons are free to ask whatever questions they like. Will our next entrepreneur, former barrister, a de jure Doherty from London, be able to stand the pressure and hold his nerve? My name's Adejre Doherty. I'm here from the Whole Leaf Company, and I'm here to ask for 120,000 of your very hard-earned pounds in exchange for 20% of our business. What the Whole Leaf Company does is we import, uh, supply and distribute an eco-friendly, or in fact the only truly eco-friendly and sustainable alternative to the common paper and plastic disposable plate. Our products are made in a very simple, low-energy process from this the raw material, which is a palm frond. In India, they have around about 600 million Arica palm trees. This is the top of the tree. When the nut of the tree is ripe, this falls to ground naturally. It's classed as agricultural waste. Uh, what we do is we pick up this palm frond, we wash it in a local groundwater source, and it goes through a heat press, like that, and it comes out looking like this. We are now supplying Sainsbury's who are trialling uh, our product. What we're going to do with your money is hopefully grow our business. Uh, we're going to do that by spending an amount on stock, which means we can buy at much higher volumes, much cheaper, and also develop the product. What I'd like to do is uh, give you some plates to play with. I've got a specially strong one for you, Mr. Pathetis, because I know you like to break things. <laughs> um, yes, my feet. A polished pitch from a de jure Doherty who wants to develop his fledgling business importing disposable plates made from discarded palm leaves. The former barrister needs £120,000 and is willing to give away a 20% equity stake. Do you pronounce your name a Desre? A Desre, but uh, call me Dej, it's probably easier. Dej, how are you? I'm Peter. Hello, Peter. Um, the trial that you're doing currently in Sainsbury's, yes. tell me a little bit more about the trial. What we're supplying to Sainsbury's is a picnic pack, uh, and uh, it's, it's this. What does it sell for, retail? That retails for 4 .99. And what do you supply it to Sainsbury's for? Uh, two pounds and two pence, and it costs us almost exactly that to supply it to Sainsbury's. 
We don't make any money from it at the moment because we're buying in such low volumes. And if we imported um, in, in larger volumes, immediately we'd be cutting our costs by around about 40, 50 percent. So you can get the cost down to a pound? For this pack. That's, that's possible, yes. A solid start from Dej. Now, Theopophytis wants to put his product under scrutiny. What happens mm. if I wash this? Now, because it's untreated, it's, we don't use any chemicals, resins or agents, we can't, uh, for instance, advise you to wash it and reuse it. I'm now, asking if you for it, advice. I'm asking you what happens. If you gave it a relatively quick wipe, absolutely nothing. It re retains its shape. Right. If you put it in a dishwasher, just, which I have done, um, it doesn't fall apart. It actually just, it just loses its form. So if you actually take it out and dry it, you've then you know, got another flat plate, essentially. So far, so good from the young businessman. But will his green credentials wash with Deborah Meaden? Dej, hello. hello. I'm Deborah. Hello, Deborah. I'm very pro finding alternatives to this pretty unpleasant stuff that we make our disposable products out of. So I was really quite excited. The problem with this is price. Mm -hmm because it stops it from being disposable. No, not if we buy in high enough volumes. We can compare well, to the disposable market. Well, talk me through that then. Okay, a pack of uh, the white disposable plates that you, you might have seen and, and hopefully not used uh, cost you about uh, two pounds for, for 10. So they retail for about 20 pence each. So in my estimation, supermarkets were buying them at around about seven or eight pence per piece. Now, if we get up to volumes of 10, 20, 50 million, we'll be able to buy them for, uh, for around about five or six pence per piece. Per okay, place. but you're talking about when you get up to those numbers. Yes. And I think this, do you know I love this, but it's got a fundamental problem. People last year were happy to pay premium for environmental and organic product. Yes. What's happened in this marketplace are people are less inclined as mm. people run back to price. Yes. When and you... therefore, you getting to your 50 or 60 million in this climate is going to be one hell of a tall order. Deborah Meaden has voiced some serious concerns. Will Duncan Bannatyne share them? You know, this is a good ethical product, except for the pricing. And so that makes it not Mr. a business. Bannatyne, could I interrupt you, I do apologise, but in terms of the pricing, the retail side of the business in a few years' time will pale into comparison compared to the, the wholesale side of the business. And on the wholesale side of the business, what a lot of caterers, which would be our market, are looking for is platters like this. The issue there, it's cost. They're not going to introduce a product like this. Who's not? The catering industry. That's not true. Why? Because the caterers I've spoken to, and I've spoken to many, some of whom have already oh, ordered God. this product, and I mean some of the biggest caterers in London. How many pro of this product have these big caterers yes. ordered? Most of them have ordered around about 500 to 1,000. That's tiny, isn't well, it? Well, it's only a trial order. They've never used it. Do, you have, do you have written orders? Yeah, I've got a concrete order from, from Eden Caterers for 1,000 a, a of these platters. It's Dave, just do you know why they've ordered 1,000, Eden? <laughs> They've got a specific event in mind that they think this will work for. What they're not thinking is mm. this is going to replace their entire range. That's exactly what they're thinking, Mrs. Meaden. They're going to replace their range? Yeah, they're going to replace their range of platters with our palm platters. And so are, so are Kingfisher caterers. And I actually have show, an email from show, Kingfisher. Show me a letter from Kingfisher or Eden saying we're going to replace all of our stock with your product as soon as you get it and we'll pay the price, no problem. Yeah, sure. Dage's revelation of another, more lucrative market for his products may salvage his pitch, but only if Duncan Bannatyne feels he has the proof he needs. I wanted to write and confirm our interest in your supply in this range. Yes. Does it say about replacing the whole...? No. We've indicated our requirements as being in excess of 50,000 units per annum, and we'll have an ongoing requirement for your range over the next two or three years. If it's not an order, um, it's an interest. For 50,000 at 20p each is how much? It's 10,000 pounds. 
Right, so you're going to replace the whole of the caterers requirement for a whole year and you're going to make, at your price, £10,000 profit. Per caterer? The, I mm, actually sorry. believe there is a possible opportunity here. Yes. Right, but you haven't actually worked it out. So, unfortunately, for that reason, I'm out. Okay, Mr. Fees, thank you very much for your advice. Diz, yes, Diz, look, Mr. it's a cash 22 situation. You can't sell them at the right price because you can't buy them at the right price. You can't get the distribution because exactly. you can't sell them. It's a, you know, it's a huge mess. And that, what, so for that reason, so for that reason, for that reason, I'm out. Okay, Mr. Bantai, thank you very much for your input. Disappointed that the sales leads aren't solid, two dragons walk away from the deal. James Khan is now ready to break his silence. Okay, Des, let me tell you where I am. Yes, Mr. Um, I actually like the product. Yes. Um, I just think you're asking for too much money. Okay. If you'd come in here looking for 50,000, it would be a punt that I probably would take. But regrettably, it's not for me. Okay, Mr. Khan. But Thank for that you. reason, I'm out. Thank you. Des, can I, can, I, can I tell you where I am? I love the idea. Do you know what I like about this? It's not just environmental, it's ethical. You know, it's got the whole thing wrapped up in it. This would be a great product. You've got a big issue on price. And I didn't see a clear route to how you were going to overcome that. Okay. So I'm afraid I'm out. Thank you very much for your advice. Thank you. Dej. Yes. For the first time, you've made me feel like what it could be like to be a judge. <laughs> okay. The only reason why I can't invest in you is just comes back to you've priced yourself out of the market. Uh, may, may, so, I, may I? No, judgment has been cast. <laughs> I'm out. No. Thank Good you. Luck. After a bright start, it was a disappointing end for the former barrister as the canny investors eventually exposed the vulnerabilities in his business plan. He walks away with nothing. Do you know, but joking apart, do you not agree that this product is unbelievable? It, it's oh, great. It ticks all the box. It's great. waste. It's absolute waste. Entrepreneurs who enter the den are not allowed to take in written prompts, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have all the relevant figures on the tip of their tongue. Beverly Binder from London fell foul of this rule when she came in wanting a hundred thousand pound investment in her fashion makeup brand. I'm an Oscar-nominated makeup artist in the film industry. I realise that in 25 years of being a makeup artist, not one new brand has emerged in all this time for the ethnic customer. Blouse and Skirt is the first fashion makeup brand for ethnic skin tones. Having laid down the foundations of her pitch, Peter Jones got straight down to business. Have you made any money, or have you, or have you lost money? I've lost money. How much have you lost? Um, I didn't think you'd ask me how much I'd lost. Well, I have put it in about 60,000. How much of that 60,000 have you got left? None. In the end, Deborah Meaden just couldn't gloss over the bare facts. Do you know, you're lovely. You're really nice and everybody here, I can feel, likes you. Otherwise, you've had a much tougher time than this, trust me. But your numbers were diabolical. Do you know what I would do if I were you? Offer to work with somebody to develop a range with them and take some kind of royalty. That's not me being harsh. That's me being kind to you. So I'm out. OK, thank you, Deborah. Husband and wife team Peter Giles and Beata Sparaga needed £75,000 to start manufacturing their London whistle. I've been a London cyclist for the last five years and I'm all too aware of the dangers of cycling in heavily traffic streets. I wear a helmet, a fluorescent vest, I have a light, and I've also been given this. But when I'm in danger, what I actually do is this, to make sure that people know I'm there. So, together, we developed the London Whistle. We believe that the potential sides of the business is big, it's great. Suddenly, the normal business language of the den was replaced by an altogether unfamiliar one. What about the old fashioned? It's not as it's not as loud as that. What about the gas ones? The market that we believe is going to be very interested in this. That looks for something that's a bit more technology oriented and don't want to go harker harker. You can't spend your life going zip 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 just so everybody can see you. 
in the end, Peter Jones blew the final whistle on the couple's time in the den. But the market potential. Peter. I'm out. So far tonight, only one business has received investment from the Dragons. Coming up, will any of these hopeful entrepreneurs walk away with the cash? I don't really know what you're doing here, to be honest. This is... It, it's not a business opportunity. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe it. It sort of seems too good to be true. If I was going to gamble, and I see you draw a line between the two... I do. I don't. I'd like to say you're fabulous. So I'm going to say you're fabulous. All businesses come with their own risks, but few are as clear-cut as Londoner JJ Hazan's interesting proposal. Will the high reward he's offering be worth the initial outlay of £65,000? Hi everyone, I'm a poker player, I'm a very good poker player. My name is JJ Hazan and I specialise in tournament poker. I'm here to look for an investment of £65,000 which will secure 40% of my tournament winnings for a period of one year from agreeing a deal. I plan to play 33 major tournaments throughout the year thus minimizing the risk and increasing the chances of success. I'm building a safeguard to this investment as well. I will guarantee that you will get 100% of the first £50,000 that I win. It's an unusual investment, but with the potential of substantial returns. I've won $547,000 in tournament winnings since November 2006. So, why am I here asking for your money? Good question, Theo. Why am I here asking for your money if I've won so much? Well, I'm a family man, so I paid off the mortgage, we bought a summer house in Sweden, and we travelled around the world for a few months. I kept just £20,000 for my poker fund, and I've made a profit of around £50,000 from that capital showing an ROI of around 250%. I really hope you want to join me on a fun and profitable journey. Thank you very, very much for listening. Game of poker, anyone? Theo, if you could take that spot there. Duncan, if you could go just... It's a high-risk strategy from poker player JJ Hazan. In one of the most unusual business propositions the Den has seen, he's offering 40% of his potential winnings in exchange for a £65,000 investment. Well, I know Explain. you play cash, Theo. Me, I don't play. Quite high levels. And I know you play tournaments, don't you? Yeah. This is dead boring sitting here. We've got an ace. Theo Pafitis and keen poker player Duncan Bannatyne want to test JJ's playing skills. But the demonstration is alienating the remaining dragons. This might be really interesting for these guys, no, but no, can I just no, tell no, you, I no, haven't no, got no, a clue no, no. what is going on. Let's go, the last one. I'm not going to put any more money in, because I know you've won. You know I've won. And I'm not going to try and bluff you. You know I've won. Because you'll read me like a book. You know I've won. I know you've won. I'm going to fold. <laughs> well done, Theo. You, <laughs> you've you taken all much. my money. <laughs> Game finally over, and an impatient Peter Jones wants to start questioning JJ. The pitch is quite clear and simple, isn't it? Pitch is clear and simple. Gamble on you, and if you make I don't money. like the word gambles, quite seriously. I'm not a gambler, I'm a poker player, and there is a difference. I don't really know what you're doing here, to be honest. This is... It, it's not a business opportunity. This is a, a complete... You might call it not gambling for yeah. yourself, but you're asking me to gamble. I don't know you. I don't... Absolutely I've never fine. met you. It's yeah. a... It, there, it's... there are... There is a lot of link to being a business. I don't have the capital to do this because I might... No, but uh, yeah, I'm investing in somebody that I've never met until he walked up the stairs. You've sure. got no real tangible asset. This is not a business opportunity, to be blunt. That, that, um, that's absolutely fine. It's I not for me, so I'm going to say I'm problem. out. problem. That's, that's cool. Thank right, you. Right, JJ, yeah. What was with the glasses? Um, 
<laughs> poker. Poker player, <laughs> image. Well, that's about the level of question I'm going to be able to ask you. I don't yeah. have the slightest idea, having watched you, having you delivered a pitch, yep. having watched two people play, yep. I still don't understand. So I'm, I'm not going to learn poker Absolutely here. fine. The only thing I will say is if I was going to gamble, and I, 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 see, I see you draw a line between the two. I do. I don't. So if I was going to gamble, I probably wouldn't do it by proxy. So you prefer I, I, to gamble you're your, never your own gonna, There is That's not fine. enough time here to... Empty room, fill it up, talk is cheap, listen up. I don't know where we went wrong, but I feel I'm shaking these walls, yeah. Nothing safe, gotta take cover. Still the love, we just make glitter. Running and running, yeah, we got off track. Now we under attack. To health again absolutely yeah and I often use the analogy that if I did what I do in business in a casino I would probably get beaten up and thrown out sure because in business I like to stack the cards in my favor and I do that by doing my job properly doing my homework and knowing what I'm talking about what you're offering me hasn't got any of those and it's, it's completely a, different an out gamble. I think you're right. It is a gamble. It's a different kind of investment from the ones you normally do. But what you would have is someone who does have an edge. I have an edge in poker. I'm a very good poker player. I read well. I have a degree in psychology. I've played for 25 years. My record is very good. If I hit big in one of the tournaments that costs more to enter, I win a million pounds. Name another business that has that kind of return. JJ's now holding his own in the den, but has he done enough to sway poker buff Duncan Bannatyne? JJ, um, which tournament do you intend to win? First, second, third, fourth, fifth? Uh, in, in the business plan that I've put, I've put down that I will cash in eight out of 33 tournaments and get a return of about uh, 230,000 in total. So I've See, put down a... In that case, you don't need 65,000, do you? Because No, but I need should, the commitment. You should, you should be up by tournament seven, I mean, you sure. just need 20,000. But the truth is, I could win the third tournament I play, in which case everyone's happy. No one, you don't need to ever pay the full 65,000 yeah, pounds. But it could be the 25th tournament. The other thing is, when I win money, you have that money in your bank account the following day. This isn't a three or five year deal where you're waiting to sell your business and earn money from that you get the money immediately in your bank account the following day there's not many other businesses that can offer you an immediate return is jj's robust defense of his business plan countering the dragon's objections enough to extract the 65,000 pound investment theo Pafitis has now made up his mind let me tell you where I am. Yeah. I go back to uh, what I said earlier. Uh, I take calculated risks. JJ, you've not given me an opportunity to take calculated risks. What you've done is give me an opportunity to have an out and out gamble. That doesn't work for me. I mean, I don't think I'm a gamble. I think I'm a good investment, but then I'm going to. So on that, for that reason, I'm out. Fair enough. Thank you. JJ, good pitch, good idea, very unusual. Not what I would expect to see in Dragon's Den. Right. Um, but it's not really a business investment. Okay. Um, so, regrettably, JJ, I won't be investing this time, but no thank problem. you very much. Thank you but very much. I'm out. Attention. Two more dragons out, and only Duncan Bannatyne can salvage JJ's dreams of investment. JJ, I look forward to um, playing against you at a tournament someday, or even a cash game. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'd like to see how good you are. But until then, uh, I'm not going to invest in you, and so I'm up. All right, thank you, guys. Cheers. An audacious right. attempt from JJ, but it was one gamble these dragons weren't prepared to take. Other entrepreneurs who tried and failed in the den included identical twins, Chris and Rob Downham from Sheffield, 
with their concept for a new web-based business. They wanted £100,000 for just a 10% stake. Chris and I have got 25 years combined experience in the financial services world. Our mission is to revolutionise how financially active internet users organise their lives by providing them with an online, high security, document and information storage safe. Initially, their meltdown had more to do with nerves than the economy. There's over £1 billion sat dormant in UK bank accounts. The market in the UK is 24 and a half. It's like the Chuckle <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> it's the <laughs> Chuckle <laughs> Brothers, isn't it? But the financial climate was soon the talking point as the dragons went from seeing double to seeing red. There's a lot of very good businesses that are going out of business that could do with £100,000 to stay alive. You know, I can probably see why this country is in such a financial mess. If people like you who are in financial services can have the audacity to walk in here with an idea that's got not even a website and look us in the face and say, I will value that at a million pounds. Former watch seller Theo Pafitis had no time for Spencer's new design. If I'm driving along, mate, I look on my dashboard, that tells me the time. Sure. There's about half a dozen clocks in my car. I'm out. Thanks, mate. Cheers. He did clock up a sale from one dragon. Spencer, I'd, I'd actually like to buy one from you. Sure. But ultimately, Deborah Meaden wound up the proceedings. It's actually, when I put it on, it was surprisingly unbalanced as well. I actually think you're wrong about it not being balanced. It's fun it's fantastic there well, on the rest. Well, Spencer, that unfortunately is the only thing you can't say I'm wrong about because to me it feels unbalanced. I'm out. The dragons know that products which save businesses time can make them a lot of money. Next into the den is single mum Sharon Wright from Scunthorpe who needs fifty thousand pounds to launch her first invention onto the worldwide market. Hello, my name is Sharon Wright and I'm looking for £50,000 for 15% share of my company. I first realised there was a problem threading cables and wires through cavity walls and void spaces when both a BT and a cable engineer visited my newly built home to carry out their install. Trying to thread a cable through a cavity can be hit or miss and nearly impossible in some situations without the aid of an improvised tool such as a coat hanger or a drill bit. Both these ad hoc me methods present themselves with major health and safety problems, as well as wasting valuable time. They have to thread from the inside to the out, at an angle, as well as having the cavity insulation to contend with. It was after these visits I had my eureka moment and invented Magnamol. I approached BT, they liked the concept and they liked the prototype, but they wanted me to prove the value of the product. So for your normal install, from the inside of the property, simply insert your rod and you're now on the outside of the property. The pack comes with five caps and they're tapered to screw on the inside so they fit onto any size cable or wire. Simply twist them on until snug, align the magnets and push the cable through. Seal off and the job is done. The product had to work in all threading scenarios and the results showed a potential saving of 6.5 million in downtime alone per year. I have a two-year contract with BT to supply all engineers in the UK. I have a two-year distribution agreement with Schneider in the UK. And I have a distribution relationship in the USA covering all 50 states of America and Canada. I also have a letter of intent for one million units. <clears throat> the product is proven to work first time every time. Thank you for your time. Has anybody got any questions? <laughs> 
it's an impressive start by Sharon Wright from Scunthorpe, who wants a £50,000 investment in her time-saving cable threading accessory. She's prepared to give away 15% of her company, Magnamol. Duncan Bannatyne is first to question the inventor. Sharon, I'm a bit taken back. It sort of seems too good to be true and too simple. What does it cost you to produce? It costs from 97 pounds. Pated, did it? Yep. It's got a UK granted patent. It's also got the yep. international patent. You've sold a huge number. So why do you need anybody's money? Why take somebody else's money and give them equity in your because I'm working fantastic company? 16, 20 hours a day, seven days a week, and I need your help to take me to the next level. Sharon's staying confident. James Kahn is keen to know more about the inventor herself. What's your background? How did you... I, I'm, I'm confused. My background was health and safety and quality assurance, which naturally go together. I'd moved into a brand new house. I'd had the, um, the install booked. BT were due in the morning. They didn't arrive till lunchtime. So I was under pressure, obviously, to get back out the door to do my job. I asked him if there was anything I could do to hurry the job along, and he said, I'll get my, my tool from the van, and it was a coat hanger, which naturally I thought, my God, you don't even know what's on the inside <laughs> of that cavity. My health and safety background came into force, and it, it just came... It, I just had one of those eureka moments, and I thought, I can't believe this product's not out there. So I did my research. I looked at everything Sharon, that was on the market. I think it's ingenious. Thank you. I was told from the patent attorney when I first went to see him, it was a no-brainer. It was like the cat's eye situation. And that gave me the confidence, really, to take it to the next sure. level. I'd like to say you're fabulous. So I'm going to say you're fabulous. Thank you. I'm about to write a cheque of £50,000 from my Good. children's hard-earned inheritance. Good. What are you going to do with it? 5,000 would be for the CAD inserts to have the language interpretation multilingual. I want to go global and go into every single country with this product. 10,000 would be into the, the website, obviously, the language interpretations and for market research. 35 would be for staffing, so it releases me to be able to do what I'm good at, to go and be an have ambassador. Have you got no staff at the moment? I've got one person that works one day a week. That's all I can and afford. And this is your full-time job? This is my full-time Day job, night job, evening working, job, working weekend job. Uh, no, I have an office. I do have an office. Where? In my hometown of Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe. Yeah. Tell me, Sharon, do you have a family? I have a 12-year-old little girl who's my biggest fan and biggest supporter. OK. And that's it. Sharon has yet to put a foot wrong. But Peter Jones thinks he might have spotted a flaw. The biggest issue and potential flaw to me over this invention is the fact that it's not an invention or a product that actually will be purchased more than once. You kind of almost want your product to break occasionally. I think once you've hit that market, what I'm saying is I think once you've hit the penetration... I wouldn't agree because my next product, my next, next invention, takes the cables down the inside of the cavities, but you have to buy Magnamol to be able to retrieve it. And that's why the distribution chains that I've got, I'm working towards longevity. <laughs> I told you. Mm. I think you've done amazingly well. I really do. So I'm not going to declare myself out yet. <laughs> I'm going to sit tight and wait to see what the dragons <laughs> do. It's been a clean sweep of praise for this entrepreneur and her product. But Sharon has yet to receive an offer. Is Deborah Meaden prepared to invest? I've got to say, you're great. Ever, 
in the den, someone has come in and all five dragons' jewels have dropped yeah. no, to you're very the good. floor. So do Thank not you. be disappointed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But for me, just having someone at the end of the phone, so I'm not up 23 hours of the night and only getting one hour sleep because some decisions take me a long time to make them and I still battle with them and I have made mistakes along the way, but still just having that confidence to somebody who's been there and done it, that's priceless to me. It's absolutely priceless to me. Sharon, can I ask you one question? Yes. If you had a magic wand, yep. this was your magic wand, yep. and you went, yep. what would you like to happen as you walk out the den? to receive the £50,000 for 15% share of my company. From? From particular dragons. Mm. From James and Duncan, if I'm being honest. Okay. Focusing on one investor over another is a dangerous game to play in the den. Will Sharon's candor pay off? I mean, the company that James and I I'm investing is called Electro Expo. It has chop box, wrap strap, and three other products that haven't been on Dragon's Den. Okay. So, um, I, I mean, yeah, I think, I think Sharon is very, very investable. So, person. are you making an offer to me? We certainly well, will well, make. But we're an not offer. Sharon because only because they're waiting to spot our offer. Nobody wants to break cover first, Sharon. That's uh, what's happening here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying there's me, no office on the table yet. Sharon, let, let me help you. I'm going to break cover because um, you deserve it. Thank you. Okay. Duncan and James have already said they're, hap uh, they're happy to make you an offer. You've already said you've come in the den looking for an offer from Duncan and James. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, I'll be more than happy to underwrite what you asked for, uh, which was... 50,000, 15%. So, you. I'm your insurance policy here. Okay. In a bid to flush out a potential offer from his rival dragons, Theo Pafetis has shown his hand. But it's not gone down well with Duncan Bannatyne. I remember, Sharon, we had a, a, a fantastic young lad who came in front of us um, who had a retail product. And I remember saying to the young lad, you know, it's a fantastic product. And the best person for you to develop product is Theo Pafitas. And I pulled out and I let Theo do the deal with the lad. Yeah. Obviously, these three dragons are not as honourable as me <laughs> and they won't do that. I can make her an offer. You can do it. She wants you to. Make her an offer. Can James and I go to the back of the room? It's a bizarre den moment. Will James Kahn and Duncan Bannatyne come back with a tactic to outfox their rivals? <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Who's in charge here? Um, shall I? Sharon, we, we, we've had a little think. Yeah. We've had a debate. James has phoned his, 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 his wife and I've phoned my mother. <laughs> and we like to make you an offer, okay? okay. Um, Sharon, you've come in looking for 50,000. Um... for much more equity. Is Deborah Meaden prepared to take on Sharon's preferred dragons to clinch the deal? Without a doubt, these guys are very well placed, but you shouldn't discount the experience that other people have. Because to be honest, getting out to the overseas market in one area is quite similar to getting into overseas market in other yeah. areas and we all of us have experience yeah. in doing that and certainly nobody ever complains when they work with me so I will make you an offer and I'll make you an offer at the level that you asked so fifty thousand pound fifteen percent if we do work together and find that we needed more money in the business yeah. I just make the business happen and I provide the funds to do it okay. as long as I'm convinced on the business plan okay it's a show of ruthless determination from Deborah Meaden. Now, 
Peter Jones is ready to tell Sharon where he stands. I think and feel that you don't need any money. Um, and I think you need an individual or individuals that are going to take this product, help you take this product and expand it. And I think it's going to go potentially global. And I think I'm going to shock everybody by saying I'm going to declare myself <coughs> out because I think that Duncan and James are the best place to take your business forward. Okay. Sharon, just have a reflection, I think. Okay. In an unusual move, Peter Jones has made way for his rival dragons. Sharon now has to decide between accepting more money or keeping more of her company. Thank you for your offer, everybody. I'm a businesswoman, and I'd be stupid not to negotiate further. <laughs> Would you go for 20% and I'd be happy to do the deal with you two guys? Would you meet us at 22 and a half? Yes, I would. So, I'd be very pleased. I, I, and, I, and I would love to do the deal with you. I really would. Thank you. Well, great deal. Thank well you. Fantastic, Sharon. I'm so proud. So proud. Sharon's done it. She may have given away more equity than she originally intended, but she walks away with more cash and the two dragons she wanted. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. She was absolutely fantastic. One of the best I've seen. Immaculate. Absolutely That'd be immaculate. Very good. Well, Sharon, it's hard to think of a more impeccable encounter. Your daughter will obviously be very proud, I imagine. Molly will be so proud of me. She's been my biggest support from day one. And she said to me this morning, you can do it, Mum. And no, she will be so proud of me. Well, you're undoubtedly the star of Scunthorpe tonight. Very, very well done indeed. Thank you very much. Interesting to see the usual roles reversed in the den today. Having left the dragons speechless by her impressive performance, Sharon Wright had to wait for two of them to go to the back of the room to think about her offer. Well, if you're looking for an investment in a business idea or invention, there are now even more opportunities to secure one with the new online dragons. Go to bbc.co.uk slash Dragon's Den for more details. Goodbye. Next time on Dragon's Den. You couldn't have came on here with a piece of plastic and a piece of string, could you? When you walked up, I went, oh my God. I am... Um furious, annoyed, I think it's a disgrace, and on that basis, I'm out. And the Dragons are back next Wednesday at 9. Taking the Flack is about to start over on BBC Two now, and here on BBC HD, stay tuned for Who Do You Think You Are?